hey everyone welcome back for another lesson so today in this lesson we are going to talk about the initiation process of mrna translation so in general there are three distinct phases of mrna translation first is initiation second is elongation and third is termination and in this lesson we are just going to focus on the initiation process of translation so there are some key components which are required for translation initiation first is mrna because mrna uh, carries the codons which are required to uh, code for amino acids uh, to synthesize proteins second we also require ribosomes uh, which include small and large subunits so in prokaryotes it would be 30s which is small subunit and large subunit is 50s and in eukaryotes it is 60s and 40s ribosomal subunits and we are going to talk about this in a little bit detail shortly now third we have transfer rna which has an amino acid binding site on it and therefore transfer rna is able to carry amino acid to the ribosome for protein synthesis it also has this anticodon and the sequence of anticodon is complementary to the sequence of codon on mrna now most importantly for the process of translation initiation we require a specific type of transfer rna which is called um, the specific type of transfer rna is a charged transfer rna and it is also called as initiator transfer rna now uh, in this initiator transfer rna it carries uh, methionine amino acid and this methionine is modulated to formulated methionine by adding the formyl group on the methionine and we will learn that shortly how this methionine on the transfer rna is modified and here i uh, a signifies the uh, initiation so therefore it is called initiator transfer rna so next important component is guanosine triphosphate gtp so gtp when it is hydrolyzed it releases energy and that energy is then utilized for initiation complex assembly and also to remember that gtp is not only required for the initiation but it also uh, important uh, for um, uh, elongation and termination process uh, by providing energy now lastly uh, we require a set of soluble proteins which are called initiation factors now this initiation factors in prokaryotes they are just called if uh, that is um, the initiation factors whereas in eukaryotes these are called eif which is eukaryotic initiation factors now these proteins are g protein family members that use the energy released by hydrolysis of gtp and these proteins are usually always bound with gtp so when they are bound to gtp they are considered to be active and when they are bound to gdp which is the uh, which is produced after hydrolysis of gtp so when they are bound to gdp they are considered to be inactive so now let's talk about the ribosome so though i have covered this in detail in my previous video i'm just going to quickly talk about this uh, in this lesson so ribosome which has two subunits uh, small subunit and large subunit and these subunits are made up of ribosomal rna and proteins so let's talk about in eukaryotes so here uh, we have small ribosomal subunit which is called as 40s subunit and large ribosomal subunit which is uh, which makes up 60s subunit and together they make up 80s subunit and this s is actually uh, is nothing but it's just the relative sizes of ribosomal subunits which are given in terms of their sedimentation coefficient or s which is the swedberg values and i always wonder that uh, this uh, uh, eukaryotic ribosome which is uh, 80s why is this called 80s and why is it not called 100s which is the addition of these two subunit and the reason behind that is that this swedberg values are determined um, on the basis of the shape and the molecular mass of the ribosome and therefore because it is determined on the shape and the molecular mass 
this uh, numeric value of ribosome cannot be an addition of this um, uh, uh, cannot be the addition of these two subunits that is 60s and 40s and that is the main reason now in prokaryotes uh, we have small subunit which is a 30s uh, subunit and a large subunit which is the 50s subunits and together it makes up a 70s subunit ribosome in prokaryotes so in addition to the large and small uh, large and small subunit in ribosome ribosome also has three important binding sites so suppose here we have ribosome and this is our uh, mRNA strand. So the first site on ribosome is A site or it is called acceptor site because uh, this site accepts the incoming amino acid transfer RNA. Now when I say amino acid transfer RNA that is the transfer RNA where the amino acid is attached. So transfer RNA which carries amino acid is called amino acyl transfer RNA. So in short, uh, A site is used for the attachment of the incoming amino acyl transfer RNA. Now second site is called P site or peptidyl site or sometimes I'll, I call it as a parking site. So this site is occupied by the peptidyl transfer RNA. Now peptidyl transfer RNA is the transfer RNA which is carrying the growing polypeptide chain. So this is your transfer RNA which is carrying this growing polypeptide chain. So this one, they are, the one in circle, they are amino acids and when they are joined together by peptide bond, peptide bond, they are called as polypep, they, they form this polypeptide change, uh, chain. Damn it. So there are three important binding sites on ribosome. So here we have ribosome and this is our mRNA strand. So the first site on ribosome is called A site or acceptor site. So this is the site which accepts an incoming amino acyl transfer RNA. Now amino acyl transfer RNA, this is the transfer RNA which carries or where the amino acid is attached to it. Therefore, it is called as amino acyl transfer RNA. So in short, A site is the place where incoming amino acyl transfer RNA is attached. Now second is called P site or peptidyl site or sometimes I call it as a parking site. So this site, P site, is occupied by the peptidyl transfer RNA. Now peptidyl transfer RNA is the transfer RNA which carries the growing polypeptide change, uh, chain. Sorry. So this is the transfer RNA uh, which is carrying this polypeptide chain where you see the one in circle. They are amino acids and they are joined together by peptide bonds. So uh, forming this polypeptide uh, chain. So in short, the P site is uh, occupied by the peptidyl transfer RNA. Now last site is the E site or the exit site. And this is the site where the empty transfer RNA occupies prior to exiting the ribosome. Now empty transfer RNA means amino acid, uh, sorry, transfer RNA which does not carry ami any amino acid. It's also called as deacylated amino acid because uh, it does not have any amino acid. So when transfer RNA has amino acid, it's called amino acyl transfer RNA when it does not carry amino any amino acid it is called as deacylated transfer rna so in short there are three important binding sites a site which is the um, which is the acceptor of the incoming amino acid transfer rna p site which is occupied by the peptidyl transfer rna and e site exit site where the empty transfer rna is attached before exiting the ribosome Now another important thing I want to talk about is how mRNA and ribosome are aligned together because uh, that is crucial for uh, accurate uh, mRNA translation. So if they are not aligned properly, the translation process cannot be initiated. 
so in order for the mrna to be translated accurately its sequence of codons must be brought into proper position on small ribosomal subunit and there are different mechanism in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes so let's talk about uh, let's first talk about in prokaryotes so this is the mrna and this is the initiation codon uh, which is aug which we have already talked about uh, uh, in previous video and this is a purine rich sequence of nucleotide bases and which is called as shine dulgarno sequence and this shine dulgarno sequence is located 6 to 10 bases upstream of the initiating aug codon and that is also the uh, close to the five prime end uh, five prime end of mrna now there is this 16s ribosomal rna which is the component of the 30s ribosomal subunit in prokaryotes which also has this uh, nucleotide sequence near its three prime end and this sequence is actually complementary to the shine dalgarno sequence on mrna so 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 when they form this complementary base pair when the 16s ribosomal uh, rna form the complementary base pair with shine dalgarno sequence this eventually facilitate the positioning of the small ribosomal subunit on the mrna which is also in close proximity to the initiating codon that is aug so the recognition of this uh, shine dalgarno sequence by 16s ribosomal rna is very crucial in positioning this mrna or or in aligning this mrna and uh, small uh, ribosomal subunit now let's talk about in eukaryotes so the first thing to remember in eukaryotes is that the mrna in eukaryotes they do not have this shine dalgarno sequence uh, in fact, uh, the 40s ribosomal subunit in eukaryotes is assisted by this eukaryotic initiation factor 4. So this EIF4 is bind, um, EIF4 binds to the 5' prime cap of the mRNA and then it moves along the mRNA until it encounters this um, initiation codon uh, on mRNA. So this is how it actually position both mRNA and small ribosomal subunit uh, in eukaryotes. Uh, so e initiation factor, eukaryotic initiation factor play an important role in positioning both uh, mRNA and small ribosomal subunit. Now next I want to talk about initiator uh, transfer RNA. Initiator transfer RNA is important for translation initiation and here uh, as I mentioned before transfer RNA which carries modified methionine that is formulated methionine and I here signifies the initiation. So initiation transfer RNA which reads the initiation codon AUG on mRNA that signals the start site for translation. Now Initiator transfer RNA only reads the initiation codon. It cannot read the internal codon, meaning that suppose this is your start codon, that is AUG, and if there is any other AUG codon after, uh, after the start codon, it won't be able to recognize this, um, this codon. So therefore, this is considered as internal codon, and this is the start codon. Now, it is also essential for translation initiation, but it is inappropriate for peptide chain elongation. Since it is not able, to, since initiator transfer RNA is not able to recognize the uh, internal AUG codon, it cannot participate in peptide chain elongation. So now let's talk about how the methionine on transfer RNA is modified. So here we have transfer RNA and to the transfer RNA methionine amino acid is attached to its 3' prime end and so therefore this is called transfer RNA uh, carrying methionine amino acid. So the amino group on methionine is modified and the reaction uh, is catalyzed 
by the enzyme called methionyl formal transferase so this enzyme uses uh, tetrahydrofolate as the carbon acceptor so what it does is it actually formulate the amino group on methionine to generate this n formal methionine and and this n formal methionine which is attached to transfer rna is then called as initiator transfer rna so now you can see that the transfer rna which carries this uh, formulated methionine uh, that is and, and and i here signifies the initiation so therefore this is called initiator transfer rna this initiator transfer rna can only identify the star codon aug whereas this transfer rna which carries only methionine that can actually uh, recognize the internal aug codon and and can participate in peptide chain elongation so this is the two most important uh, difference you need to remember uh, what uh, is the role of initiator transfer rna and what is the role of transfer rna which only carries methionine now one last thing to remember that eukaryotic transfer rna does not carry uh, formulated methionine they have non formulated methionine so they have this transfer rna which carries methionine the only difference you need to remember that it has this i which signifies the initiation therefore the transfer rna which has this i only recognize the initiation codon so this is the big difference between eukaryotic transfer rna initiator transfer rna and prokaryotic initiator transfer rna now let's talk about this uh, soluble protein factors those are initiation factors uh, both in uh, prokaryotes and eukaryotes and so initiation factors they they are bound to uh, initiator transfer rna so in prokaryotes this initiation factors they are called if2 which are also bound to gt gtp uh, and like I mentioned that when they are bound to GTP they are considered to be active and when they are bound to GDP they are considered to be inactive and in prokaryotes it is EIF2 which is eukaryotic initiation factor 2 bound to GT, uh, GTP so hydrolysis of GTP into GDP and inorganic phosphate provides the energy which is uh, important for uh, the assembly of the initiation complex and there is this initiation uh, factors which are also bound to a uh, small ribosomal subunit so in prokaryotes these are if1 and if3 and in eukaryotes this is eif1 eif1a eif3 and eif5 so when this initiation factor bound to the small ribosomal subunit they facilitate binding of small subunit to initiator transfer rna and secondly they also facilitate the a uh, base pairing between anticodon and codon so lastly let's now talk about the formation of initiation complex and here i'm going to focus this uh, in prokaryotes so the three most important things we require is first small ribosomal subunit which is bound to uh, initiation factor second we require mrna which is carrying this initiation codon aug and third we require initiator transfer rna which is carrying this formulated methionine and it is uh, the transfer rna is also bound to initiation factor which is further bound to gtp and it is also carrying this anticodon so the first thing is to positioning the uh, small ribosomal subunit on mrna and as we saw before that this is facilitated by recognizing the Schindel-Garno sequence uh, on mRNA by 16S, uh, 16 ribosomal uh, RNA, in most importantly in prokaryotes. And remember that eukaryotes doesn't have the Schindel-Garno sequence. And once these two are, uh, once the small ribosomal subunit and mRNA are aligned, the initiator transfer RNA then recognizes this initiation codon and uh, brings the uh, anticodon which then uh, form the uh, complementary base pair with the codon on mrna and creates the uh, pre-initiation complex 
and once the pre-initiation complex is formed subsequent to this the GTP which was uh, which is attached to the initiator transfer RNA is hydrolyzed to GDP and inorganic phosphate as well as the initiation uh, factor which was which was bound to small ribosomal subunit are also released and the energy which was released by uh, through this GTP hydrolysis is then used to create the complete uh, initiation complex by attaching the large ribosomal subunit to the pre-initiation complex. So, so this is important that the, the energy which was released from GTP hydrolysis that is used to create this complete initiation complex by attaching the large ribosomal subunit to the pre-initiation complex. And lastly, uh, I just want to mention that the initiating transfer RNA is the only transfer RNA which is positioned uh, in the ribosome's P site with the anticodon base paired uh, to the mRNA's codon. So usually transfer RNA does not uh, does not bind to the P site on the ribosome. It is always the A site which actually receives the incoming transfer RNA. But this is the <coughs> But this is the only transfer RNA, that is the initiator transfer RNA, which can bind to the P site on the, uh, on the ribosome. So this completes the initiation process of translation. And if you find this lesson helpful, please like and share the video and subscribe the channel. And I will see you next time. Thanks so much.